Hey everyone, this is um, a how-to video uh, discussing how to fill out the study guide for our quiz this week. So I'm going to go over the first question and in fact, let me go ahead and delete that part. I'm going to go over the first question of our study guide with all of you to help you uh, determine what it is that you need to do so that you can find these answers. Um, all of the questions in this study guide are going to be the questions on the quiz. And once you've found the answers, you've filled it in on your study guide, you've got all of your answers completed, you can then click on the quiz and fill in the answers on the quiz. This will take you, um, well, an indeterminate amount of time, but you get one chance on the quiz to fill in the correct answer. So I hope that your study guide is completed. And I'm going to show you right now how to get by using the number one, question number one as an answer, how to get the answers to your study guide. So referring to code and images in the PowerPoint provided in our module called the Pictorial Analysis of Chapters 11B of the CBC, um, that is going to help us get started. So for question number one, the question is, what is the minimum clearance allowed for a hallway or corridor? Now you may remember we had some videos earlier in the module that could get, provide the answer to this question, but we want to make sure that it is completely accurate and that it applies to the California Building Code and not just to the American Disabilities Act, which is federal law, not code. So let's make sure that this question, we have the correct answer in code. Now I'm going to go to the PowerPoint and I'm going to click through until I find some information on corridors. So we're talking about carpet, door swings, clearances, vertical clearance, ground floor clearance. Hmm, okay, here we go. Clear width of an accessible route. Looks like a person in a wheelchair traveling through a hallway or a corridor. Let's go one more just to make sure we're on the right track. We have clear width that turns. Again, it looks like a person in a corridor. It reminds me of a video that we had earlier in our module. And then we have handrail clearance. So we're kind of moving away from that direction. I'm going to go back. This is talking about clear width that turns. Let's look at our question again. Question is, minimum clearance allowed for a hallway or corridor. So it doesn't have anything in there about turning. So let's go back another. Okay, clear width of an accessible route. I think we got the right slide. So now that we're here, let's look at what the minimums are. So we have a 36 inch minimum listed at the maximum coverage of the space. And then we have these little bump outs, which in reality are probably columns. And occasionally when a column has been formed, you have this area that sticks out, that kind of sticks out into the hallways or the corridor space. And for those short little bump outs, we're allowing up to a 32 inch minimum. So looks like we have 36 inch minimum or 32 inch minimum. But now that we have this visual, we can also look below. Figure 11B-403.5.1. Well, I think we need an explanation of what exactly we're looking at here. So let's go to code. I'm going to take you to the internet and then we're going to go check out iccsafe.org. So that was the um, website that we went to for our free code um, online that we were evaluating last week. So I've gone to the CBC Title 24 Part 2 and I've looked over here on the left hand side where our additional information is and our chapters are. So let's see, we've got chapter 10, 11, 11a, we're in 11b. I'm going to click there, and let's take a look at that PowerPoint again. It's 11b-403.5.1. Okay, so we're going to be looking for section, or division, 4. Aha, accessible routes. We're going to click there. Now we have more information and we can read about it. 11B-401 general-402 accessible routes. Well, we're looking for 
let's go back. 403. Okay, 403 walking surface. 403.1. And I believe we're looking for 403.5. Okay, very good. So we found it. 11B-403.5. And our last is 0.1. 403.5, 403.5.1, clear width. Perfect, we've found it. Except, as provided in sections 11B-403.5.2 and 11B-403.5.3, the clear width of walking surfaces shall be 36 inches minimum. Okay, so then we have a few exceptions listed. There's that figure we were looking at on our PowerPoint. And here's the, those other than noted, right? Oh, I think, did I go too far? Walking surface provided. Oh, here it was. 403.5.2, 403.5.3. .2, clear with that turn. Okay, so we were talking about turns. That's another section. We don't care about turns on this question. And the last one was passing spaces. Again, question one doesn't mention passing spaces. It doesn't mention clear width at turn. So we're concerned about this. Except as provided in two sections that don't apply to question one in our study guide, the clear width of walking surfaces shall be 36 inches minimum. So that is the answer. Except when it can be reduced the, to 32 inches for a length of 24 inches maximum. So basically in 24 inch segments, the hallway can be reduced to 32 inches. Great, now we have our verbiage. We can actually, ugh, it's not letting me copy, but you can actually look at this and you can fill in to the 36 inches so we'll go to our study guide and fill in minimum clearance is 36 inches except in 24 inch maximum wide intervals that can be a minimum of 32 inch clearance. I guess it would be 32 inch wide clearance. And my typing is terrible, sorry guys. So 36 inches wide except in 24 inch max wide intervals that can be a minimum of 32 inches wide clearance. And that doesn't make total sense. So let me see, 24 inch maximum length intervals that can be a minimum of 32 inches wide clearance. Okay, and we got our answer. So there's the answer to question number one. So you see how I referred to the PowerPoint, got the information on where I can find it on code or in the code, then referred to iccsafe.org and that chapter, that division, that particular section so that I had all of my information correct and completely clarified. And then that would be the answer for question one. So for the final two through 15, you guys are um, on your own. So. Refer to this video as often as you need to to help you um, navigate through the PowerPoint and then through the uh, iccsafe.org code to help you get the correct answers for your study guide, which will then apply to your quiz. All right, good luck, everyone.